Welcome to another episode of Vaseline with Stu. This episode is going to be a little different. It's not going to cover any analysis. It's not going to cover any replays. It's not going to cover any rules or whatsoever. It's going to cover the expanding world of ASL that's online. And that is pretty much going to be coming from mostly your players that have just played face-to-face and that can no longer do so for the various restrictions that we all know of. That may end soon, but that's another story. But anyway, this is going to be covering ASL online and its ability to expand your experiences as an ASL player, um, good or bad. I mean, if you just like playing with your regular F- FTF group and you just want to meet with them online, that's perfectly fine and viable. Uh, if you want to meet other players, you're learning the system, you're brand new, no one lives near you, which is the case for many players, then you have no excuse but to get on ASL online and play either play by email or play live. And there's various things that you can do to make the live play better uh, using cameras or whatever. But um, what you have done in the instance, and you should, if not, if you haven't already, I would go to YouTube and go to the ASL for real time, ASL in real time. Uh, Neil and Scott have developed some Vazel tutorials on how to install what you're dealing with and things like that. So the first screen you'll probably see is something like this. When they, when Neil sends you to this page, you're going to come here. It's going to have, you know, Vazel info, download.com. It's going to have download info, user's guide, FAQs, intro, etc., etc. What it typically will have will have the modules. You really don't care about any modules but Vazel. And um, so go directly to this site versus the Vassal site, V-A-S-S-A-L. Come to the V-A-S-L.info and it will have everything you need. It's got boards, other boards for other modules, multi-man publishing, third-party products, uh, overlays, standard overlays. Uh, extensions you may need or may want based on your interests and scenario setups. Um, many of these setups were provided by Patrick Ireland, the late Patrick Ireland. He has done a, an, uh, an, a tremendous amount of work trying to get these setups going. Um, the only issue with some of the setups is they become outdated based on the recent version. As we see here, the recent version is 6.5. Now what the Vazel gurus do is of course they're improving Vazel all the time. If you were involved in Vazel from the beginning when Rodney Kidney first uh, brought it on scene, um, essentially they had block square blocks for buildings in the old Vazel versions. Um, the graphics were horrible, but when you have no ASL online, you have no players, that's the only thing you have. So you just took it for what it was. Um, now we the technology has obviously increased over 20 to 30 years and we have practical identical boards um, directly that's off your sets and things like that. So the beautiful images that you have um, uh, is a work of art and those map gurus should be commended as well as all the programmers behind the scenes. Everyone, a lot of people have contributed to improving Vassal to what it is today. And uh, in my opinion, it has saved ASL and has increased MMP sales like you wouldn't believe um many people will just drop out and not play asl anymore because the, the lack of players this allows you to have hundreds of players at your disposal so in each version you'll see uh it says new in version 6.5 l this is an extensive update and you see the the amount of updates you here have here when you have the updates please read them um, it will describe what you need to do problems you may have bug fixes here that's had counter changes board updates uh you name it it's got it there's this is extreme detail i mean look how long this update is very big very important update 644 that's the only changes in 644 that's why it goes from 644 to 65 as a larger update of course as a standard so um if you're playing with 643 or 642 and your buddy logs in and you sync to his game and you can't see anything, you probably have different versions. Don't assume you're running the same version. Always check, and many um, ASL online players have multiple versions 
of their of their Vazel file based on whether old games are played by email email games that may take quite a long time um, based on the speed of the players or what have you you know real life gets involved so this is what you're going to be looking at now after you install it we go straight to the the map you're in the middle of a game here and um you have various factors after you learn the interface you know you've got a you've got your menu bar up here uh you've got drop down menus this uh this top menu here is customizable so once you get comfortable in moving counters and manipulating counters and breaking units and right clicking on stuff and left clicking on stuff and not picking up extra counters like this you know stuff like that um once you get used to the interface, I encourage you to go to um, this little dot up here. This isn't a tutorial, I'm just showing you. This little dot up here, the little SK guy, and then what you do is you go select QC configuration and then go modify current QC configuration. Play with that, again, after you're comfortable with it, and you can modify your bar up here. Like me, I just have a DM right there. Here I have all my prep fire markers here's essentially smoke first fire uh victory control hexes this is a night section this is a counter marker section uh you got prisoners and miscellaneous you got fire lanes and residuals and etc etc this is all customizable and what you should you should actually personalize for your vassal system i'm going to close those tabs so um this is your standard setup when you lock in now what we used to do in the past before the advent of voice and video and the whole nine yards of the internet that we have today is we used to have to type to one another in the vassal control room which i won't bother to show you here you'll know about it it's how you type and you you can you can communicate if you don't have a mic or whatever to your opponent well we all know that's a real pain in the ass because um when you get into a rules discussion or you know you don't know the guy hasn't moved for five minutes maybe he went to the restroom or whatever um you know it's it, it can be it can be very slow in conducting your game um using voice over the internet of course makes it instantaneous i know what you're doing we can have a discussion i could say hey the unit in x0 uh my 436 and x0 is going to road dash across the street to z1 no big deal, you can follow it just like you can follow it in a normal face-to-face -face game. Now, what I want to describe to you here, uh, as the ASL community as a whole can be either localized or globalized. Um, I don't know if many of you face-to-facers are just local ASL groups. Uh, I would think that that would be the issue because many ASL veterans are now coming into the Vazel world of online ASL, but yet have many decades of experience from their local groups. Um, I encourage everyone, regardless of whether you have a face-to-face -face group, is to at least reach out to other members of the community of the world, as you will see the play styles differ uh, from region to region. And, um, and you learn to uh, enjoy your opponents, uh, appreciate them and respect them for the ASLers that they are. So, um, People like me, um, I don't have the opportunity typically to play with many people from the East Coast simply because I'm on the West Coast and, of the United States. And therefore, you know, our times conflict. Whereas uh, if, I'm a, if I stay up late, say 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night, that's going to be 7 or 8 o'clock in the morning for players in Norway, Sweden, you know, Germany, things like that they'll be getting up and you can arrange a game at that time so you can play from i can play from 10 to midnight and if you're getting up right before you go to work you can play from six or seven to nine depending on what your schedules are of course so that's not a big deal um also um i play I've, i have played with a lot of uh, australians and new zealanders simply because uh the time is is conducive to that a lot of times if it's eight o'clock my time i think it'll be like you know, two o'clock in the afternoon, the next day, um, um, in Australia or New Zealand. So, um, or the previous day, I, I don't know. I'm an American. I don't really know too much about time zones. So, but, um, but that's the case you have here. So the point of this entire video 
is to show you the different ways to communicate with individuals and what those means. I'm going to show the two most pop, well, two of the ones that I feel are the most popular or um, most up to date and easily uni uh, interfaceable. And those of course will be uh, Discord and Skype, if I can bring Skype up here. And um, many of you use Skype, nothing's wrong with using Skype, but what Skype has, um, I'm going to show you some advantages and limitations of each one. Skype, obviously you can have your list of individuals over here that's on your friends list. Um, you can arrange your meetings either through Skype messaging or through Facebook or a different group or a different setting or, or group wise or whatever. And you can arrange your meetups there. You simply enter their information here, which you have to obtain through emails or what have you and click on a name and then you just initiate a call and that call is isolated essentially like you're using your phone one call to one call you can add people to the call later by this button up here by this button up here by create new group and therefore you can add new people you can have um video with it which can uh include um you know when you're on the on the media you can have videos of them or of the different individuals playing. Typically some players do use that and don't, but what you can also do is you may send video messages. This is the video messages that I'm recording. Or of course, you can send an audio message. This is the audio message that I'm recording. And so those are just different means that, that, you, that you might be able to use. You probably don't use them. You probably are standard, call a guy, play a game, Sit in the Vazel, um, sit in the Vazel rooms over here. You know, you you link up, and you go into your Vazel rooms and you play your game. That's fine and dandy. That's I have no problem with that. Uh, that's what everyone does, and we enjoy our games and we have a great time at it. So, but um, because ASL, in my opinion, because I do a lot of videos and there's a lot of individuals and I play a lot of individuals from across the planet, uh, ASL is more of a community than most other game systems. I mean, if you look, if you look on the Vassal server and you hit refresh, what are you gonna find? You're gonna find a hundred thousand games, anywhere from GMT games, SPI, old stuff, you know, uh, Risk, whatever. You're gonna find tons and tons and tons and tons of games. And then you come down to, and um, uh, you come down to most of the rooms, most rooms will have one person in it, two people in it, one person in it, two people in it. There's Red Poppy's campaigns. Look, we got one person. Uh, Shogun, we have two people. One's in the main room, one's a new one. We go to, let's find someone that's got more, uh, which is, I gotta be honest with you, kind of hard to do. And then you come down to Vassal. And if you just look in the last 24 hours, if you click last 24 hours, it shows you how many people have been in that server in the last day, of course. Again, you go down the list and 90, I would venture to say 97% of the, of the rooms will have less than 10 people. And it's probably higher than that. It's probably 98% until of course, you come down to Basel. If you can't see it here, it says 675 which means 675 people, different people, have come into the room. Look at the number of games that have been conducted in Vassal in the last day. The last day. This number is astronomical. It used to be like about 100 or so. 675. That means a crap load of people are playing ASL online. Which means what? What does that mean to each and every one of us? That means Vassal is a huge community in this media, huge community. And what I propose, not really propose, is what I suggest is we use that strength of community and either A, continue to grow players. If you care not to grow more players or teach new players, which we'll get into, um, that's fine. That's everyone's prerogative. But some people like to bring in new players like to teach new players, like to show new players, expand, show their kids, show their grandkids, whatever. And um, one media that I enjoy, Skype can do that. 
it does have limitations as pretty much what i showed here is about all of what i understand of the layman's that you can use skype you can add files of course send contacts you record a message and that's about it you know so you can do a couple things but those are all pretty much on an individual basis yes you can combine you can create groups on the side over here specific groups and you can have that same sort of thing there so it does increase your ability to do things but what i use and what many online gamers use is the discord interface and yeah i know a lot of you are hemming and hawing and you know why should i learn a discord and discord doesn't work and my connection is bad yes if your connection is terrible to Discord, if you have a terrible connection for Discord, the audio is horrible, don't use it. I mean, we're gonna use the best thing that has the best connection for us. Not everybody has your connection. Not everybody has my connection. Some people have better connections than others. But overall, Discord, I feel, is a better service to the community. Why is that? Well, take a look at our server here. Um, these are on my particular servers. When you initially install Discord, you won't have, all of these are the servers that you're looking at. Uh, I have an ASL skill servers. I don't use it that often. I really haven't built this community much at all. But what I have is our text channels. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the advanced squad leader central server. And this is the one that I believe um, a Hong Kong war gamer is managing as the admin of. So um, he's done a ton of work and uh, before COVID, the, the text channels that we had available were probably eight or nine. Since COVID, he has expanded based on the uh, population that are using it. If you look out here on the right, online, 94 members of this community, of this server community, the ASL uh, Discord server, are online right now. Uh, many times, if you create a... Um, it will tell you like if you're playing a different game or or watching a movie on netflix you can have a you can have an indicator saying what you're doing so we have a hundred people online right now then if you go down here further we have 723 people that are offline so we have one a pretty much a thousand players or a thousand members of the asl community in Hong Kong War Gamers Advanced Squad Leader Central. Okay. So what, Stu? I don't give a crap. I've got a thousand guys on my Skype thing. Yeah, you might. I, I, I do not doubt it. What you don't have, you don't have the text channels. You want general chat? You click on general. And um, you can see whatever conversations which occur here, which occur daily, multiple times a day daily. General SK discussions, general uh, solitaire discussions, uh, beers and chats, bullshitting, you know, whatever. Form of Perry says these. Are, most of these are new that that Hong Kong War Gamer um, uh, has added to here. Military history. If you're into military history, go for it. MEP Scott Blanton. A lot of times he'll post updates on here. Of course, your opponent wanted. You can find tons of opponents here. Play by email or not. There's actually a play by email lobby rules questions uh J, jrv um um has recently um lent his ser quote services to being available to answer rules questions on here he's a very good player very knowledgeable of the rules and is a great resource game squad yes you could find the same thing on game squad um but here's pretty much what i'm getting at is your one-stop shopping uh i mean you can't get you can't get more damn threads than this i mean uh, the one the threads that i have unhighlighted the, the kind of grayed out ones are the ones that i don't receive that i'm not interested in i don't have to receive messages all the time for the i'm not I, I highlight the ones that i'm going to receive updates in and messages threads over here you know you there's tons of different random different threads here and uh, there's a couple there pacific ocean korean war asl i'm interested in so i highlight them clubs all the clubs d-day dodgers uh french nor norcal asl new york city socal texas uh i don't even know why is uh yahoo guys i don't know rally point sweden twin cities these are all venues where these clubs can post different things um bulletin boards buy sell trade info center i want to play perry says updates Pub public bulletin board this is e easier interface to connect to even than facebook facebook is a running 
you know, running stream of just questions after questions. Sometimes it'll get lost, you have to reboot it. Here, it kind of does the same thing as any text will do, but it will show you the new ones. And then you also have voice channels that you may enter. Here it has voice the, the general voice channels. To enter the voice channels, you simply click on them. I'm in room number three now. If Panzer Shrek DS wants to come join me for a game, I can either message him or go into his room and say, hey, well, my my mic is muted. I can say, hey, Panzer Shrek DS, you want to play a game? Let's go to Valza 1. Boom. Or you could have something set up. Uh, I arranged a SK uh, meetup this last weekend and set four o'clock and I posted the link to my particular uh, ASL skills server. I think it was the ASL skills server. And uh, it was the general chat section, right? So at four o'clock, everyone clicked the link. It came right on in. Everyone's rip roaring and ready to go. Um, so what, what, does, what does Discord have in terms of functionality that ASL doesn't have? Other than, of course, your simple text posts and things like that. Well, you can have any number of voice channels and what this allows you to do is allows you to bounce between uh, connections. Let's say, for whatever reason, five of these channels were open with, let's say, two people in each channel, just like you would see on the Vassal server. Let's pop this open. Just like you would see on the Vassal server. Let's get it going here. Uh, we're going to look for a game online. We don't care about this. We don't care about that. We care about this. So what you, what, she, what you should see is something like this. So we've got all these players in all these rooms here. Whether they're active or not is, uh, is, you know, whatever. Some people just stay online forever. But anyway, you have these rooms. If you're using Discord, you obviously have to be using Vazel. So you're on Vazel, but the interface to co communicate, you can use Discord through. And to simply to communicate through Discord, you could either have your own server or you may join a uh, Hong Kong Wargamer server here. There's no cost, no nothing. It's free, easy to download. You don't even actually have to download it on your computer. You just connect to the server like you're connecting to Facebook, something like that. And therefore, you can just enter room number five, join your game. Um, there are, you, if, if you don't want people to join your game, you can say, hey, uh, Hong Kong Wargamer, can you select four or five different rooms and just make like, a capacity of two so only two players can go in there if i don't want to be interrupted but this is an easier interface to connect to people you can go with that if you don't care about other people joining in and, and learning games um you know you most likely you're going to stick with skype because that's what probably what you've been using nothing's wrong with that you just um that's just the way you want to be you don't want to be interrupted you don't want guys coming in or whatever but um maybe you have your online group maybe you have your five six face-to-face -face guys and they see you're playing ASL online, maybe they want to chat with you instead of having to go to Skype and, and have to add one guy, then add the next guy, add the next guy. You don't have to do a damn thing. You know, if 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 me and Panzer Shrek are in a room and you guys know that we're playing from seven to nine, you just show up. They just show up and they just click your room and enter your room. So, and they, then you could chat and bullshit or do whatever you want to do. Um, other things you can use are you can turn on your camera just like you can with uh well this is probably going to interrupt because i already have the camera going but uh you could turn on your camera and therefore you have the same video that you have on skype it's exactly the same or if you're conducting like a training seminar or a training session or you want to go over a rules example or whatever you may share your screen and if you pop screen you may choose any of the windows that you have open any of them that you have open let's go with basil main map and I'm going to go go live. So what you do here is then you can double click on that one and blow that up if you're um, in the room with me. So what you do is you can right click on someone and then you essentially join that live session. So you can then view my screen. And so while I'm on, let's say you don't have Vazel up. Let's just say you have Discord on your phone. You're just checking things out uh, or on your iPad or whatever. You could still follow along as you see my cursors in two places you can still follow along on the map. So it's a good resource to use if you're instructing people or multiple people instead of just one person at a time, and they can come and go as they wish. They can mute themselves just as you can in Skype, um, and they can also 
you know, if they don't want to hear anything, maybe their wife's talking to them, they can deafen themselves as well. So their mic and their headphones or their speakers, whatever they have set up is disconnected. So you can share, again, you can share your screen and I'm going to change window. Let's say I want to change window. Uh, let's go to another resource, another excellent resource that if you're not online playing ASL, guess what? Grumble Jones, excellent blog. Uh, he's been doing this forever. Uh, if this guy doesn't love ASL, nobody does. Um, his a AARs are absolutely fantastic, uh, if not the best in the in the entire you know ASL genre. Um, if you don't know about this, go to Grumble Jones' site. Just type Grumble Jones ASL, and you could find it. I've got the actually boxcars again blog blog com. Just put Grumble Jones ASL, and it'll come right up. You don't need to know all that crap anymore. The the, the victory is the same. Um, the same thing with um, Hong Kong Wargamer. Uh, if, he, if he's up here, let's see where I've got it. Uh, maybe not. But Hong Kong Wargamer also has excellent, excellent material in his site. His isn't the exact same inner, the type as uh, Grumble Jones, but he has more like cartoon uh, windows. It just kind of gives you flavor. It's a real uh, tongue in cheek sort of ASL as a storyline going along, very good work. And uh, he also happens to do, be the admin of the ASL Central Discord server. So many of you have probably tried this and say, Stu, uh, uh, Discord's a piece of shit. The connection's terrible. Um, all my mics don't work, whatever. User settings, right here, user settings. Click user settings. You've got my account info and this. Uh, I've got streamer mode enabled, so all my passwords aren't showing up. Go to app settings voice and video this is where you're having your problems your windows or whatever system you have your computer system audio uh like right now i have my mic set up over here and my speakers in front of me for my windows interface in discord these may be different from your windows setup so therefore when you hear things on windows like your music or videos or whatever you're watching and then you get online and then you join discord and you can't hear me it's because of these right here these two simple settings input device you may have default it's probably going to be default when you start so you have to select the proper things me i have a yeti stereo microphone and i also have a headset i have a headset mic i never use this headset mic i always use the yeti one simply because the yeti is a slightly higher quality and you know whatever that's my preference but I also have front speakers, and but when I put my headset on, I change that to my Plantronics HD1 headset. So therefore, my Discord settings are going to be Yeti microphone, Plantronics headset, if I'm playing like an online shooter game or things like that. Um, when I'm playing you online, I may have my speakers here, and a lot of times in my videos, you may see my little earbuds like this, my earbuds are simply plugged into my front speakers. So therefore, I do have earbuds on, but my output device is front speakers because I have it plugged into that little port. So if you're having difficulty, and you can also check. Let's check voice check, voice activity. You see this green bar here, which determines your input sensitivity. Uh, it has video cameras for the webcam. You could test that. Uh, it has a noise suppression where like, if you're clickety-clack on your keyboard, you can activate your noise suppression. It will minimize that sound. It may not eliminate it completely. Uh, even claps, theoretically claps, clapping, and that is this noise suppression here. So if you have someone typing a lot, like say you're chatting with somebody and they're conducting a thing, they're multitasking and they're, you're doing some bullshit on Facebook. Where they're typing away, you know, you can eliminate most of that sound. So, that's all pretty much what I have to say. This is a lot longer than I wanted to be, but just 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 to go to show you that, you know, ASL is a community. Obviously, a thousand players are on here. Six hundred ninety-five players were playing ASL yesterday or watching somebody's other game. One one thing that's very important here is, even if you don't care about teaching other players, even if you don't give a crap, I don't want to bother teaching new players. They slow the game up. I don't want to have to explain myself. Guess what? If you're one of those guys, I have no problem with that. 
I, I, I'm the same way sometimes. You know, sometimes you don't have patience with certain players and things like that. I, I'm not judging anybody. What I'm saying is, is by virtue of you being in one of our rooms, one of Jackson's rooms that he's created on the ASL server or my Vasling with Stu or his ASL skills, you know, whatever. Um, if you are in one of these rooms playing with one of your guys you've been playing with 25 years, you probably know the damn rules, right? You probably know them pretty damn good. If I pop into your room, if you allow spectators to pop into your room, as long as they're not a-holes, you know, you could probably kick people. Like here, you can mute them, you can deafen them. Like right now, I muted myself like that, right? You could literally click on someone like Panzer Shrek DS. If I don't want to hear him talk, I don't care whether he has it selected or not. I mute and disable video for him so he can't, you know, do that or I can block him or whatever. Um, so if you don't want to hear him talk, you could simply mute the individual. Um, I think you probably do the same thing on Skype, but you know, whatever. So let's, let's go to the point I'm trying to make is you are, you don't care about teaching players. You don't want to talk to other players. You want to talk to Panzer Shrek, DS and myself. We're the three guys of us. We're sitting here. Other people can come in the room. You can mute them. Don't have to listen to them. Um, they can hear you. You can conduct your game without even knowing they're there. And what that does is A, is it makes your game available to other players without you even knowing that they're there because this screen, where's the screen gonna be? I happen to have two monitors. Where's the screen gonna be? It's gonna be there. This is what I'm gonna see. So I don't even know they're joining the room. I could disable the room entry notification quite like that so i don't hear the blink you know of someone coming in the room you can disable that not a problem they can come and go they can listen to what your experience has you can actually be teaching people strategies how to get the hell across the road you know if i'm right here and let's say uh okay my 63666 he's gonna pop smoke so um you conduct your business he pops smoke okay now my um, demo charge guy, he's gonna counter exhaust, gonna bypass one, two, three, and and four, five. You know, a lot of players don't know how to conduct those things in a certain order. You go through all the phases. I'm gonna I'm gonna deploy this guy over here. I'm going to mantle my support weapon. I'm going to uh, enter my reinforcements and set them off off board. And then you go to prep fire phase, and you always remember to fire smoke first. And then you conduct your prep fire phase, and you do movement. You show them how you move. You say, okay, I'm gonna move now. Okay, here's my house squad. One, two, three, there's the concealed German stack. You better, I hope he, hope he fires on him. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, he's there. And then this person here, well, we're gonna, we're gonna go one, two, three, four. You know, simply by virtue of you making yourself available in these rooms. And of course, if you lock your room, they can't look at your picture anyway. So again, that's your prerogative. I'm not judging anybody here. But what I'm saying is by you simply doing nothing, nothing, you can help all the other members of the community through SK, through brand new guys coming on, through naysayers or whatever, or the 850 other people that are in the server uh, that may or may not be active. The more active it becomes, the stronger the community comes. And therefore, you know, the more stuff you get. The stronger the community is, the more crap MMP will put out. You want that crazy ass type of, you want the Finnish module out, you want the Swedish out, you want the Italians out, you want new Italians. You've got a thousand people shouting at MMP, we want new Italians, they're gonna make new Italians. That's the that's the way it kind of works. Well, theoretically. Regardless, my point is, you don't have to do anything to teach people. You just don't. They simply just can connect to your room without you knowing just click well you can know by just if you want to click on your discord room and you can just look in your room to see who's there you can know who's there but you can mute them so you don't have to hear them you know if the, you, you don't want them to listen to you that's fine uh you can they there can be rooms with just two people there's not you can limit the rooms to two people there's not a problem with that and that that's what i would suggest as well there's only 10 rooms here available um uh, anytime I usually go on Basel, I look to see who, how many people play a game, and I immediately click the Hong Kong War Gamers, the ASL Squad Leader Central server. Why do I do that? I want to see if anybody's using the voice comms, so I can just simply enter the room, 
Go to room three. I mute myself. I always mute myself because I don't want to interrupt their game. I'm just entering the game and I can hear them chatter. You know, they're welcoming enough to allow me to listen to their game online. 99% of the time say, hey, how you doing, Tom? You know, how's it going? You know, we're just playing, we're, you know, turn three of uh, Americans kicking the Germans ass, you know, whatever. And, uh, you know, I lost the Tiger early or whatever. And pretty much they become friendly like most ASL players are. And that's how you build a community. Um, this has been around for a while. Uh, Hong Kong Wargamer has added a lot of text channels. Uh, some are very good. Obviously, you can just add the ones you're interested in. But um, that's what we're looking at in terms of things. And I think this is a good view. Uh, again, if your connection to Discord sucks, if, you, if your home connection sucks and it's not conducive to Discord, if you're using an old outdated Windows version, that's nothing that we can deal with. I'm just showing the tools available. Skype is available for you. Works fine on Windows 7, whatever. Discord, you know, maybe Vazel 6.5 doesn't work well on your computer anymore and you can only work 633, whatever. Um, that's something on your end that you have to deal with that you have to change um, if you want to participate in those particular things. Um, I personally have been on Discord for quite some time. Um, video, screen, and the noise suppression are pretty new. It's about, about maybe a year old on these. The screen is actually really new and you can add and, you know, um, uh, display a screen at any time. I've actually used this in other games. You know, I've re and received coaching from other games that I play. Hey, this is my game replay. I'm sharing my screen with you and you can follow along for games that actually don't allow you to share their screen. I could play Call of Duty and you could show me how to do things by watching me play the game um, and things like that. Um, it's not just for ASL or for board games or whatever. Um, most of the gaming communities online use Discord. Uh, um, I don't know if any of them use Skype, to be honest with you. Because Skype is more like a one-on-one -on -one mode. Discord is more of a group and community mode. Um, obviously, I produce videos for the community, so therefore I am slanted to more community involvement. That's why I like it. It suits my purposes just fine. And I intend to use it even more. So um, that's my rant. Not necessarily rant, but that's my description of um, just how the situation's going in terms of, you know, Vazel, other online resources. Again, AARs. We got Grumble Jones. We've got the Illuminating Rounds. Absolutely good stuff. Good live stuff. Uh, if Grumble Jones is all reading it. I mean, you can you can zip through here. There's there's tons of crap. He's got connections to all these other sites. Ritter Krieg, Roar, Game Squad, almost everybody's site. You know, I don't have to regurgitate this crap again. You guys know mostly everyone else links to anyone else. But if you don't know of Grumble Jones, find him and you will enjoy him. Um, Illuminating Rounds is YouTube's uh, replays. They do a lot of top fives. That's great stuff. Uh, ASL in real time. Great stuff, you know, that's, everyone's got a slightly different format. Whatever format you like, enjoy it. Tell the people you enjoy it, you know, support their stuff, whatever. Um, and, um, you know, just give them a thumbs up, everyone. So that's, that's all I really want. That's all I really care about. Just do thumbs up. I like your stuff and, you know, looking forward to the next one. You know, pretty much that's about it. But, um, yeah, so, you know, join the ASL online community. I believe Discord is one of the easiest ways to maintain a strong community. I see lots of traffic of uh, discussions within uh, the online ASL Discord server. And um, some are very funny, some are serious. And, you know, there's lots of questions being asked, lots of opponents being asked for. And you don't have to rely on, you know, Facebook and some other things. It's all centralized, you know. Sure, we have ASL, Facebook, and things like that. Um, but, you know, this is just another resource that's available to you that you may not know about. Uh, try it out. If you don't like it, uh, it's no skin off my back. You know, um, I enjoy it. I use it. And uh, I've met plenty of new players playing on it through ASL and other games. You know, um, lock, uh, you know um, GMT's probably got a Discord server. Uh, the Lock and Load guy's got a Discord server. Um, probably, S you know, whoever. They've all got their servers so you can join their community and you know add things post things you know post a game pick here 
just like so you won't if you don't have a website you've got nowhere to post it if you don't want to post it on facebook you could post it on your local communities the same sort of thing it's just that this community is, is a more of a voice chat and more group toned to group interactions and um you know i think uh, from what i understand not that i go to a lot of tournaments but most of you guys that go to tournaments you don't really go to technically play asl you go there because your your friends are there you go there because the buddies there you met 15 years ago have been going there and you're going for the the camaraderie same thing it's just virtual if you want to see their beautiful faces then you click on video you know if you don't want you want to screen share you know do screen share if you guys want to watch if you want to watch some movie together i can pop a movie on pop a screen and everyone sits in the damn discord server and we watch you know uh bridge too far together we sit in the same damn room we eat popcorn we could chat about it whatever that's available that's available skype doesn't have that again centralize it connect the people create a community that's about it thanks for watching uh use what you like again i'm just here to inform uh i like this i've obviously used them both so you know i've experienced them both my choice would be discord uh and again if you if you think about especially all the all the vows all the tournaments that have been canceled some are going to reopen, but even you can have online tournaments here. If I was a um, tournament director, right? Let's say I've got 20 people in my tournament. Guess what? I hang out in the general room and pairings 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 are in their rooms. And if group 8 has a question, they have a game question, right? And this is important. I hate to leave it for last. It's stupid to do that. I'm an idiot. Group eight has a question. They click in the general. They, they're let's say I'm, I'm I'm a player in group eight. I've got Panzer Shrek with me. I jump in the general. And say hey, Tom, we got a question with this LOS. Can you help us out? Boom. No emails. No shit like that. I pop in your room. I see if you're talking with somebody already. If you're not talking, I'll chat. You can have it muted. I instantly grab you. You instantly come to my room. And guess what I do? Guess what I do? I screen share. Say, Tom, what's that LOS? What do you think about that LOS? He said he was going to fire between V2 and CC4. And I say it's blocked. And he says it's not. And Vazel screwed up. We got different versions and so on and so forth. And we're having technical issues. What do you see? What, what do you think about that? And of course you say, well, Stu, you can't change anything on that. Well, yeah, I can. Because I guess what? I can go there. I come back to Discord. They see what I see on Vazel. So it's just about a half a second delay, and so the 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 the, ad, the the admin or the tournament director can ask you to do whatever you need to do to help him clarify the situation. If you have a rules question, you do exactly the same thing. You grab him, you pull him to your room, say, "Hey, can you come into our room? We need a, a quick rules discussion here." Uh, he pops into your room. Two and a half minutes later, after he pisses one of you off because you got the rule wrong. He goes back to general and he's just sitting there watching his movie, you know, watching his, you know, the 800th time of the longest day that he's watching and he waits for the next question or he's doing admin stuff or he's taking care of stuff or he's got his, you know, his uh, interface up that he's doing. It's that simple. Um, there's no emailing involved. I don't have to email you to have come to my room or add you to my Skype call. It's far easier. Um, it, that's, that's just a simple fact. And um, so, again, with the advent of so many Vazel online tournaments, uh, this is an excellent, excellent tool you can have. And Hong Kong Wargamer is pretty much already set up for you. If you want to kick him a line, say, hey, uh, you could actually put up a different server saying ASL tourney servers. And because most tournaments aren't held the exact same weekend, you can have someone like Hong Kong Wargamer is already familiar with it set up all these parameters they can make you an admin of the server i mean there's probably 10 to 15 people that are just the tournament directors make those the admins and you can have permissions for any number of people you can make it so that only you can kick people out of the server only you can mute people there's a lot of parameters that are behind this that make it an organizational uh friendly organizational group effort um I don't want to bother to go into those things. You can look at them yourselves and you can actually see some sort of parameters that you can set. Uh, there's a lot of them. 
um, or you could just set it open. But tournament directors, tournament uh, runners, um, one-stop shopping, baby. That's all I got to say. It will make your job easier. It will give you more time during the day. And, um, you know, if uh, you need to contact these people, you don't need to call them. You don't need their phone numbers. You click in a room and say, hey, room number zero, time's up, baby. You know, you get five minutes. Number one, oh, okay, you guys are done, cool. Number two, five minutes. Five minutes, five minutes, five minutes, five minutes. Five minutes, five minutes, five minutes. You're done. You've notified everybody in 15 seconds. Simple as that. So um, evaluate it. If you don't like it, again, I don't care. I, I, I don't care. I'm just saying that it's a great resource. And uh, give it a try. If you don't like it, throw it away. Go back to Skype. Go back to TeamSpeak. Go back to Google Chats, Facebook Chat, Bullshit Chat, whatever you want to do. Uh, it doesn't matter. Um, so uh, it's useful. If you don't want to use it, that's your choice. So I hope you guys are having great in your games. I hope everyone's being safe. And, uh, you know, ASL is great. Community is great. Players are great. And um, it's just a lot of fun. Otherwise, we, would, we wouldn't have been playing this for 30, 35 years. So that in, in and of itself tells us that it's a great game. It's a great community. If the community was crap, it would fall apart within five to 10 years. It's not. So I'm happy to be part of your guys' community. Um, obviously, I haven't met 99.999% of you. But, um, you know, I watch your stuff. I watch your games on Vazel. I read your after-action reports, things like that. You know, that makes us part of the community when that happens. So that makes us vented. I listen to the Two Half Squads podcast. I enjoy being part of that community, you know. Um, Jeff and Dave got me doing what I'm doing now. If it weren't for them, I wouldn't be doing this. If it weren't for them, I wouldn't be playing ASL again. And that's the same story that probably 1,000 to 1,500 people can tell you. Honestly, that's number, that number is probably underestimated, to be honest. So, um, you know, um, that's all there's to it. That community that Jeff and Dave started multiple years ago, because I drive around all day, all I do is listen to podcasts. Um, got me back into ASL and hopefully created some okay content for you guys. So um, I love those guys. Appreciate them. And uh, I will catch you later. Thanks a lot for watching and enjoy your ASL games.